Hello and welcome back to Lunch Break Heroes. Today's video is one that you have all been asking for for quite some time. Today we are going to be talking about the fated allies in Curse of Strahd. For each one of these characters, we're going to be talking about their overall motivations within Barovia, how your party can gain their trust, and the pros and cons of having them as an NPC ally. In this particular video, we'll be talking about Esmeralda Diavanir, Periwimple, Sir Klotz Tripolotsky, and Viktor Volokovich. We're going to be covering all 20 of the NPC allies, so be sure to stay tuned for this series. Go ahead and click the subscribe button right down here along with the bell so that you don't miss any of these videos. First up, we have one of the most popular allies, and that is Esmeralda D'Avenir. If her mentor, Rudolf Van Richten, is Van Helsing as portrayed by Anthony Hopkins, then Esmeralda is Van Helsing as portrayed by Hugh Jackman. Esmeralda is one of the most powerful and dynamic companions in all of Curse of Strahd. She's probably the most common companion in all of the games that have ever been played in this particular module. She is such a capable combatant. She is very knowledgeable about the monsters in Barovia. Esmeralda is a classically trained vampire hunter under the tutelage of Rudolf Van Richten. She and Rudolf have a very complex and convoluted relationship. You see, when she was a child, Esmeralda was living with her Vistani family. And that family kidnapped Rudolf's son, Erasmus, and sold him off to a vampire. Rudolf, understandably, was none too happy about this, and eventually tracked this Vistani family down. He was going to kill all of them, and he showed mercy. He didn't kill them all, and that really impressed Esmeralda. So when she got a chance, she left her family and tracked Rudolf down in order to learn from him and follow in his footsteps. Throughout all of those years of tutelage, Rudolf wasn't always on the up and up. He didn't fully trust her because she was of Astana, and that really got to her. So eventually, she up and left and struck out on her own to seek her own fortune, her own destiny, and forge her own path. These days, she's holed up in Barovia, searching for her old mentor once again because she's gotten wind that he is on the biggest hunt of them all, trying to kill Strahd von Zarevich. So she's here in Barovia and ready and willing to take on as much help as she can get, but only from the most capable of adventuring parties. Let's talk about Esmeralda's motivation. Here in Barovia, she has two simple goals. One, find Rudolf van Richten, and two, kill Strahd von Zarevich. Anybody that can help her do the second is going to find an ally. Anybody that can help her do the first might also find a friend. So how do you gain Esmeralda's trust? Well, she is an extremely capable monster hunter, and as I said earlier, she's only going to work with the most capable of adventuring parties. So in order to gain her trust and get to working with her, you're going to have to prove yourself, adventurers. Help her out. Get her out of a pinch. If she's running away from werewolves, help her out. If she's running away from Aragal, help her out. If Strahd shows up and says, you, you're coming with me, help her out. Any of those actions are going to sway her to your side and immediately gain you an ally. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of having Esmeralda as an ally. First up, she is a fantastic combatant. She can go toe to toe with almost anything in Barovia. She is a bona fide badass. Next, she is kitted out to the teeth. She's got all the weapons and the armor and just the gear that you could possibly want. She's also got a couple of greater healing potions, which are notoriously hard to come by in Barovia. Next, she studied under Rudolf Van Richten. She knows the ins and outs of basically any monster that you're going to encounter in Barovia, and as such, she can make a lot of these encounters a lot easier. On the flip side, there are a couple of cons to having Esmeralda as an NPC ally. First up, she makes no secret about being a Vistani, nor should she. From her mode of dress to her speech, she's completely out there with who she is and where she comes from. But the rest of Barovia is not so down with that. The town of Velaki probably won't even let her pass the gates unless she coerces her way through or sneaks in. And heaven help the person that makes a snide comment about her heritage. Oh my god. That'll get you in trouble with the guards real fast. Beyond that, Esmeralda can be a bit cocky. 
you know, she knows she's good. She knows she's the best that there is. And although she is great, she lives up to her reputation, but she can be bold to a fault. She knows that she can handle all of these challenges, but she might try to string your party along and drag them into a fight that maybe they can't handle so much. Before we move on to that next ally, I want to point out you can get this guide and all of the other Lunch Break Heroes guides in written form for just a dollar over on Patreon. In this guide in particular, you can get some extra content in the form of how to roleplay these characters. We've got some great tips on portraying their personalities, their background thoughts, and all of that. Even some key phrases that they might utter every now and then. That being said, let's talk about your next NPC ally in Curse of Strahd. Next up, we have Periwimple, the stock boy from Bildrass Mercantile in the village of Barovia. What Periwimple lacks in mental capacity, he more than makes up for in sheer strength. Now, I don't mean to say that Periwimple is stupid, because he's not. He's actually a pretty sharp guy, but he sees the world differently from you and I. He has a very different mental picture of where he lives. Everywhere Periwimple looks, he sees good and beauty, and that's a wonderful thing. It's a terrible survival mechanism, but it's a breath of fresh air, that's for sure. Periwimple works for his uncle in the Mercantile Store, and he has for years. His uncle is a bully, basically, not only to his customers, but to Periwimple himself. Periwimple could snap Bildrath like a twig anytime he wants, but he's the kind of person where that would never actually occur to him. Any adventuring party would be very fortunate to have Periwimple as an ally, not only for his sheer strength, but also for his perspective on the world and in helping keep things light. Barovia can be a very depressing place, not only for your characters, but for the actual players as well. So having a character like Periwimple by your side can be a real morale booster, both in the game and out of it. However, his uncle Bildrath isn't going to let his free muscle walk away so easily. So what is Periwimple's motivation in all of this? Well, unfortunately, he doesn't really have one. You have to give him one. You see, Periwimple's actually pretty satisfied with his lot in life right now. He doesn't know anything else, and he's not really concerned about anything going on outside of his immediate vicinity. However, he doesn't like to see people in distress. He will rush to their aid as quickly as he can. So if your party can make it clear that Strahd is doing a bad thing and that people are getting hurt, then maybe they can convince him to ask Uncle Bildrath permission to go outside and help? Now, how do you earn Periwimple's trust? Thankfully, that's really easy. All you need is a friendly smile. Periwimple's trusting to a fault, but getting him out of the mercantile shop, that's gonna take a bit more than just a friendly smile. As I said before, Bildrath isn't going to let his free muscle go for free. You're gonna have to pay him off to the tune of about 75 gold pieces. That's what he pays Periwimple in a year. But Bildrath being Bildrath, he's going to try to get you for as much as he possibly can. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of having Periwimple as an NPC ally. First up, the pros. Periwimple is one of the best allies for you to have in a straight up fight. He has proficiency in athletics, which grants him a plus 10 bonus to those checks. That's huge. In addition, if you get him a shield, that unlocks his shield bash attack and increases his AC, so he's an even better fighter. In addition to that, Periwimple could be a real rock for the party. He has proficiency in strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws. And in addition, his brave feature gives him advantage on saving throws against being frightened. This is a great advantage to have in the frightening atmosphere of Barovia. On the con side, we've got a few things to watch out for. First off, Periwimple is extremely easily manipulated. Like I said, he's trusting to a fault, so he is not going to expect somebody with ill intent coming by and trying to get him to do things that are against his best interests or the party's best interests. He's simply not prepared for that to happen. In addition, you can't rely on Periwimple to look out for danger. He's not the best person to have on any sort of watch. 
You know, whereas your party would look up into the sky and see a flock of bats and freak out, Periwinkle's just gonna see a lot of cute flying rodents and enjoy the flapping noise. Lastly, if Bildrath ever shows up and says, come on, you're going home with me. Well, guess where Periwinkle's gonna go? That's right. He's gonna follow Bildrath to the ends of the earth and you're gonna have to fight like heck to keep him. Next, we have Sir Klutz Tripolotsky, or just Sir Klutz for short. This is a comic relief character, if you hadn't figured that out from the name. He's a ghost that you can find in the crypts of Castle Ravenloft, and, well, he's just kind of a riot. He's a klutz. He screws everything up so fantastically, and just in the most bombastic way. Even the simplest of tasks backfire in his face. He died by falling on his own sword. Not even in combat. He was presenting it to renew his, his vow to Strahd von Zarevich, back when Strahd was still alive, and he tripped and fell over in front of an entire audience hall full of people. I mean, if the sword didn't pierce his heart, he probably would have died of embarrassment. Sir Klutz is a knight of the classical variety. He and Don Quixote would get along quite famously. He's always going on about valor and duty and all those other things, even though he's not good at any of them. Now, I said that Sir Klotz could be found in the crypts of Castle Ravenloft. That's not my favorite place to put him. I really, I see Castle Ravenloft as end game content, and I like to see parties get their companions fairly early on in the game so that you can develop these characters and the relationships and all of that. As such, I would really recommend that Sir Klutz be buried in some sort of roadside tomb between the village of Barovia and Castle Ravenloft. So what is Sir Klutz's motivation? As I said before, he is a classical knight motivated by gallantry and chivalry and all of that. He just can't believe that his former master has become this vicious monster and he cannot rest until he wipes that smear clean on his reputation, having served this person in life. Either that, or he needs to see Strahd find redemption. He needs to help Strahd find redemption. This is one of those nightly quests that he's gonna set himself up on, which might be successful, or it might again be doomed to failure. So how do you earn Sir Klutz's trust? Well, he's not gonna give any heed to the Taraka deck reading that you've just had. He doesn't care about the cards, and he thinks that they're a superstition. Sir Klutz was a member of Strahd's army, so he is a foreigner to the land of Barovia, and he views all of this Vistani stuff as just hoodoo voodoo. He doesn't care about it. However, if you can show him what Strahd has become and what he's doing throughout the land, well, then he's going to set himself up on one of those nightly quests like I just told you about, and he's going to go along with your party for the long haul. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of having Sir Klotz as an NPC ally. Some of the pros revolve around him just being a ghost and the nature of ghosts. His incorporeal movement, for example, allows him to move through solid objects like walls and chests and whatnot. This opens up a lot of possibilities that wouldn't otherwise be possible with any of the other allies. In addition, he can see into the ethereal plane. This gives your party a heads up on a lot of hidden enemies, especially in Argon Vosalt with all of the other Phantom Warriors. In addition, the Night Hags of Bone Grinder. If they start to nightmare haunt your party or they pop into the ethereal plane to hide, well, Sir Klutz has got their location. He knows exactly where they are and he can be your early warning system. On top of all of that, Sir Klutz is just a fun character. He is the comic relief. He's meant to be played for laughs. Anything that he does is going to backfire spectacularly. Not in any way that harms the party, but just in a way that's funny. And that's going to help you out at the table, and it's going to help you add some levity to this already dark atmosphere that you're playing in. Over on the con side, we have the fact that Sir Klotz is a ghost. You can't just walk into the middle of town with a floating spectral knight and have everybody be okay. People are going to see Sir Klutz and they're either going to run the other direction or they're going to pull their swords out and try to kill you or Sir Klutz. Things aren't going to play out all that well. So Sir Klutz is going to have to hide himself or be left somewhere if your party ever wants to go in town and have friendly interactions. Additionally, going back to the fact that he is a Klutz and things backfire, 
Well, that's also a con. You see, when Sir Klutz is trying to do something, especially important things, they don't always work out. As you as the DM, when you're running this, don't have Sir Klutz's failure be to the detriment of the party. You don't want Sir Klutz to hamstring them, especially in vital moments. However, play it up for laughs and always try to fail forward. Last up, we've got Viktor Velakovich, the emo kid that sits up in his parents' attic listening to My Chemical Romance. Victor is the troubled son of Velaki's burgomaster. He's also a self-taught mage who's been brushing up on some spell books that he ran across in his father's library, and he's been trying to build a teleportation circle to get the hell out of Dodge, much to the chagrin of the serving staff. Victor feels limited and trapped in Barovia, and I don't blame him. In terms of raw spell power, he doesn't really have any rivals in Barovia, at least in terms of natural talent. All of the other more powerful spellcasters have just had more time, or they've had official training. But Victor, he's the real deal. He's got this raw power and talent that you just don't find anywhere else. So what motivates Victor Velakovich? Well, it's not the plight of the Barovian people, because he couldn't care less about them. All he cares about is furthering his own ambitions, his own knowledge, and his own power. If you can take him somewhere where he can learn more about the arcane arts, he is totally with you. If that's outside of Barovia, all the better. But he will settle for pilfering Strahd's library for all that it's worth. Earning Victor's trust isn't an easy thing. He's a naturally distrustful person because he's been raised around shysters and people who want things from him his entire life. However, if you have a more powerful magic user in your party that can step into kind of a mentor role, he's there, he's right there with you. He's going to go with you wherever you want to go, as long as that mentor relationship is nurtured. Alternatively, if you can convince him that destroying Strahd is his ticket out of Barovia, you got yourself an ally. Let's talk about the pros and cons of having Victor in your party as an NPC ally. First up for the pros, Victor's understanding of magic isn't very complete. In fact, it's got a lot of holes in it, but despite that, he's an extremely powerful magic user. If your party is light on magic users, let's say you've got four barbarians or three rangers, well, Victor's right there to round out the whole deal. He's not shy about using those spell slots either. He's very eager to go out and use that magic ability. In addition, Victor's troubled personality and his past provide an empathetic party with a really good storyline and redemption arc in terms of teaching Victor right from wrong, good from evil, and seeing him grow as a person. That being said, Victor really has no morals. His moral compass is just shot. So if your party ever needs anything of a morally questionable nature done, well, Victor's probably the one to do it. On the con side of things, Victor is just a really unpleasant person to be around, both in his personality and in his personal grooming. I mean, the kid is stuck up in his attic all day, every day. When do you think he takes a bath? Do you think he takes a bath? I don't. All of this is enough to wear on the senses and the nerves of any adventuring party. You've got this angry kid that's just angry and grr and uh, at everything, and to top it all off, he freaking stinks. In addition to that, Victor is extremely power hungry. If he sees any opportunity to increase his arcane knowledge or increase his power, he's going to take that opportunity, consequences be damned. If that puts your party in grave peril, so be it. To top it all off, Victor's obsession with the arcane arts and power and all of that has really pushed his mind to the breaking point. He's quite mentally unstable, and he could snap at any time, especially if your party doesn't treat him the way he wants to be treated. He's a very entitled person. It's ingrained in his personality. The spoiled brat is just written all over his brain. So if you aren't playing nice with him to his standards, he can just go like that. If you want to know more about these allies, head on over to our Patreon where we have all the extra information about how to roleplay them and their personalities and all of that waiting for you. 
down in the comments below, let us know about your experiences with these allies. And stay tuned for our next video where we cover even more allies by clicking subscribe and the bell down there. I'll see you next time.